Hi everyone, I'm Dan Julian, and I'm a nurse practitioner here in Ottawa, Canada. And my clinic is Dan Aesthetics Medical Design. Today I'm going to show you guys how to identify if you're a good candidate for tear trough filler. And if you are, how I can go ahead and treat that with little to no downtime. Let's get into it. Now, before we begin, if you're an injector and you're looking for live demos or more in-depth discussion on how I approach these techniques, consider joining my premium membership. It's updated every two weeks and it's very affordable. So let's get into it. All right, so before we begin, let's find out if you're a good candidate for tear trough filler. So basically what you wanna do is you're gonna take your index finger and you're going to place it on the mid cheek right here. And if by doing so, it improves the transition from this tear trough to your cheek, and you feel it looks better or softer, then you'd be a good candidate for tear trough filler. But look at me, whenever I do that, does it make it look any better? No, it doesn't do anything other than make it probably look a little worse. So I'm not going to do any tear trough filler on myself. And if any clients come in, I always do this test and I'll let them know realistically if this is gonna be beneficial for them. Now, why am I placing this finger on the mid cheek if I want to do the tear trough and why would that improve it? The reason why is because take a feel here on your tear trough. What's there? Basically you have the thinnest piece of skin on the body, a very thin piece of muscle and then bone. There's no fat there and this is where the tear trough is. Underneath it is where we have skin, superficial fat, a membrane, muscle and deep fat. We end up losing the deep fat in the face here and causes a depression. So by restoring the deep fat, it changes the light reflex and it improves our tear trough deformity. So that's the reason why we're doing this test. And this is actually the first place that I encourage a lot of people to place their filler. We want a volumizing filler into the mid cheek to be done first which corrects most of the tear trough, then I can go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of tear trough filler, which is a nice, fine, specifically made filler for the tear trough to smoothen everything out. Why don't I just go ahead and treat the tear troughs directly instead of doing this mid cheek restoration first? Well, again, there's not much going on here. And if I try and load up the tear troughs with filler, it might look good for Instagram, it might look good now, but you're not gonna be very happy with me in four to six months because it's about a 50% chance that that filler can migrate out. Whether you're rubbing your eyes or if you force it with your face, let's say if you exercise, then it's a possibility you can squeeze that filler out or displace it and it may come to the surface. So the least amount of filler possible in the tear trough is always a great idea. Hi everyone, I just want to interrupt you for a brief moment here to talk about Jane app, which is sponsoring this video. Jane is an email documentation platform that I'm using in my clinic. And the main reasons why are because it's affordable, Canadian made, and it's PHIPAA approved. So if you're new in this industry, or if you just want to spruce up your EMR and try something new, check it out. If you want to give it a try, there's a one month grace period using Danesthetics 1MO and give them a whirl. Now back to the video. Now recently I've switched to solely a cannula technique whenever I'm doing the tear trough. And it's for two reasons. One is safety and the second is for aesthetic reasons. It doesn't cause any bruising after I'm done. The needle approach still works very well and it places the filler exactly where I need to go. The problem is, is that every time I did it, there was always at least a little bruising that was associated with it and no one wants the bruised eye. Kind of looks like you got punched in the face. So if we can do it without it, it works just as well. So the cannula is now the approach I use. And also, whenever I'm restoring the mid cheek here, there is an infraoral artery that lies very deep and I have to go deep as I mentioned prior. So if I go in directly with a needle, there's always a risk that I potentially could put that needle directly into an artery and block it, or I can pierce through a nerve and can cause severe pain. Or with a cannula, the difference between a cannula and a needle, by the way, is that a cannula looks like a needle, but the tip is blunted. So it doesn't pierce through anything, it just bumps everything out of the way. So whether it's an artery or a vein or a nerve, it's just going to bump that out of the way and it doesn't cause any bruising. So that's it for me, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please post your comments or questions below. Until next time, take care of each other, exercise daily, and please be nice to absolutely everyone. Take care.